welcome to Old Iron Machine Works. Uh, if you're new to the channel, uh, let me start by saying that this is primarily uh, metalworking related or old iron uh, related content. But this is just a little clip of uh, what I did many, many years ago, um, up to the age of about 21 years old. Okay, I just received this in the mail. This is a carving that I did 40 years ago. I have no pictures of it at all. So, and my memory of it, other than it being a canvas back, is, is a pretty slim, but the memories I do have, it's something that I wanted to keep, and one of my customers talked me out of buying it. Um, so anyway, the short story is, with the help of my daughter Adelie, we did some research, and the gentleman that bought it for me died 12 years ago. And we searched down and got a hold of his wife, and basically I offered to buy it back, and she said, no, I want to send it to you. So anyway, this is the, I have not seen it in 40 years. Here it goes. I did this in 1982, so I was 22 years old. I should probably point out when I finally got a number and I uh, initially called, it was kind of like click, like somebody picked up, hung up right away, thinking maybe sell stall. So I called right back, and I and then I got uh, Sandy's wife. And once we got past the fact that she knew it wasn't a sales call, we had a wonderful conversation. After doing a little digging around, I actually found uh, one of Sandy's old business cards. Sandy was the gentleman that bought this bird and a couple other ones. And when I got a hold of his wife, she remembered some birds. But I'm kind of thinking that they were probably in his office. But she said that she'd have to kind of look around. Uh, and then she called me right back and said the first box she looked in, she found this one. So this has been in a box for the last 12 years. I was trying to think what would be a good backdrop uh, for taking some pictures and some videos of the bird. And I thought, well, heck. I kind of use the bridge as my theme anyway, so uh, let's go to the river. I'm going to assume that that business card, which I forgot I even had them, got taped on the bottom of this bird 40 years ago. So I think I'll go ahead and take Sandy's business card and uh, go ahead and tape it on the bottom also. Kind of doing some filming between my iPhone and a GoPro 6. Once I decided to use the river and the bridge as the backdrop, I thought, okay, I need some kind of a turntable or something. And I was trying to just scrounge around and find whatever I could that I could th throw something together. And I do kind of show um, quickly building something for this turntable. Now this bird, when I used to do competition carvings, you hollow them out and when they're judging them, they're actually floating in a tank with some other birds. So they're not real heavy. You try to get them as light as you can. And when I went out earlier in the day, 
uh, to try to film, it was a little windier, a little gustier, and I thought, oh man, that would that would not be good to get this bird back after 40 years and have it blow over and, and break. So I ended up waiting a couple hours, and uh, the wind definitely died down. The wood these are carved out of is called basswood, and I still have a big chunk of uh, the last chunk I bought that this bird was actually carved out of. Uh, I've been kicking it around for the last 40 years also. I uh, don't think I'll ever do any more carvings again, uh, but just in case, I have it. My parents and grandparents were some of my biggest supporters uh, back in the day when I started carving at the age of 14 years old. And this woodpecker here was one I was working on for my grandpa. I went and stayed with them. And I remember he set something on the wings and broke a couple feathers off when I was in the carving stage. I said, don't worry about it, Grandpa. It just would. I'll glue it back together. And, and I was able to give it to him on Christmas uh, the year before he passed. Okay, this was either my very first or second bird. This is supposed to be a green wing teal. Uh, I was I believe I was 13 years old um, and I was very proud of it it was it was my first hand carving I did uh, but practice goes a long ways okay I started building this and then I realized why am I not filming it let's go ahead and film it and uh, throw it in the video so I just basically took an old uh, fan assembly uh, pulley assembly and cut the ears off and took a piece of flat bar and some angle and just started welding together, drilled a couple holes and started putting together a, uh, a turntable. I'm kind of figuring some of the other projects that I do, um, I'll be able to use it for multiple things that I want kind of a cool little backdrop and uh, so hopefully I'll, uh, you'll see it more in other videos. Uh, of course, just a good old black bucket, and this is a part out of a big natural gas uh, regulator, which actually fit the bucket perfect. And it'll just get uh, that center hole enlarged, which I didn't film, and four holes drilled in it. When I was building this darn thing, I thought, don't get it too tight, Gary, where it's going to be too tight of a fit. Well, it ended up being slightly loose. So I drilled and tapped a couple holes, and then the two bolts just kind of snug it up.
Not long after I quit carving, I got into competitive pistol shooting and then I started building guns and that's what got me into the machining in the mid 80s. Unfortunately with YouTube, uh, probably can't show a whole lot of the gun stuff. I don't think they uh, like it as much. But anyway, I appreciate anybody taking the time to watch my videos. And if you like this content, uh, give me a thumbs up. Uh, if you're not a subscriber and you like it, uh, give me a subscribe.